Hey guys, welcome to 90 Feet From Home Baseball Basics. This one's going to be a little bit different. Instead of talking about stats, we're going to talk a little bit about the structure of baseball. So most of you know that baseball is divided into two leagues, but if you didn't, that's what this episode's about. If you already know all about the leagues and the league structure, this won't be terribly exciting for you. For anybody new to baseball, here is a quick rundown of the differences between the National and American Leagues. The National League was actually founded first in 1876. Later there was another league that was kind of a rough and humble, serving alcohol, kind of fun league known as the American Association. The American Association petered out, but 1901 was kind of reimagined as the American League. There was a third league known as the National Association, but for our current needs, we're not going to focus on that at all because the National Association obviously no longer exists. Now, the National League and the American League still remain to this day. There are 15 teams in each league, and each league is divided into three divisions. Really, at this point, the only key difference between the National League and the American League, and not for much longer, is the designated hitter, or the DH. The DH basically takes the place of the pitcher in the batting order. So in the National League, they don't have a DH. The pitcher always takes bats, and as a result, the National League kind of needs to play things differently. A lot of people think that there's a bit more nuance in deciding when to pull a pitcher, when to move to a relief pitcher, because those at-bats need to be considered. In the case of the American League, they do have have the designated hitter. The designated hitter then takes the place of the pitcher throughout the game. So it's a little bit easier to play through your regular batting order that way because you're not having to take the pitcher themselves into consideration. Now the designated hitter is a huge point of contention between fans of the American League and the National League and as of this recording in 2019 it does sound like MLB is going to be moving towards a universal designated hitter within the next two years. National League fans are very very upset about this because they do like that nuanced approach to double switches, to removing the pitcher, to doing those sorts of things. So aside from the designated hitter, there aren't any real rule differences between the National League and the American League. The teams will play each other regularly during the season in what is referred to as interleague play, and they abide by the rules of the home team stadium. So if an American League team is playing a National League team at a National League team stadium, the designated hitter would not be allowed in the game. That American League team would then need to use their pitcher as a batter. And that can be kind of fun to watch because if you're an American League fan, you don't typically get to see those pitchers take at bat. So it is a bit of an added entertainment when you get to see an ace pitcher from an American League team try to get their first hit. So let's talk about leagues and their divisions. In each league, there are three divisions. There's the East, the Central, and the West. So in the American League, teams that play in the American League or AL East are the Boston Red Sox, the New York Yankees, the Baltimore Orioles, the Tampa Bay Rays, and the Toronto Blue Jays. In the AL Central, it's the Chicago White Sox. Now be very careful here, there are two teams in both New York and Chicago. So the Chicago White Sox, the Cleveland Indians, the Detroit Tigers, the Kansas City Royals, and the Minnesota Twins. In the AL West, you have the Houston Astros, who are actually the most recent team to switch leagues. Previously, the Astros were a National League team and they made the move to the American League, which actually evened things out, giving each of the leagues 15 teams, which allowed for an even five team per division breakdown. It's actually made things quite a bit easier for scheduling. So you have the Houston Astros, the Oakland Athletic, the Seattle Mariners, the Texas Rangers, and the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, which is a name that changes so constantly. I'm just giving you the whole thing. Los Angeles Angels is fine. Anaheim Angels is the previous name. Over in the National League East, you have the Atlanta Braves, the Miami Marlins, who used to be the Florida Marlins, Actually, Florida teams have a bit of a trend of renaming their teams as Tampa Bay Rays were previously known as the Tampa Bay Devil Rays and frequently wear their throwback jerseys for that. But they are now simply known as the Tampa Bay Rays and their logo has changed from being an actual ray to being a ray of light. Anyway, the Florida Marlins became the Miami Marlins and they also just rebranded this year with a new look. You also have the New York Mets, the Philadelphia Phillies, and the Washington Nationals. In the NL Central, you have the other Chicago team, the Chicago Cubs. You have the Cincinnati Reds, the Milwaukee Brewers, the Pittsburgh Pirates, and the St. Louis Cardinals. St. Louis? St. Louis? St. Louis. You have the Cardinals. 
In the NL West, you have the Arizona Diamondbacks, the Los Angeles Dodgers, the Colorado Rockies, the San Francisco Giants, and the San Diego Padres. Now, we'll get into, at a later date, a lot more on each of these teams, and we'll do individual team histories, but that kind of gives you a breakdown of the National League and American League teams and divisions. They meet once a year with the best of the best showdown in the All-Star Game, which occurs in mid-July. The World Series determines which team was the best throughout the entire season. So what happens is each one of the leagues has a division winner, which has the best record of that division, plus a winning wild card team. And between those four, you have what is known as the division series, where the best of the divisions go against each other in the NLDS or the ALDS. And then you have what is considered the championship series. So the two winning teams of the division series face off against each other in a championship series, giving you the best team from each of the leagues. And those two teams then go on to to play in the World Series, which is a best of seven matchup. The Division Series, ALDS or NLDS, is a best of five. The Wild Card Games are a one-off best of, and the Championship Series, NLCS or ALCS, are also a best of seven. And that's how a World Series champion is chosen. It's kind of a misnomer to call it a World Series, since all of the teams do play in either the US or Canada. There's only one Canadian team, the Toronto Blue Jays, but it does have that name regardless. I hope this has helped you learn a little bit more about the leagues, the divisions, the teams. Uh, remember, if you have any questions at all, please leave a comment below. Please subscribe and ring that bell so that you can find out when new episodes have been posted every Tuesday and Thursday. And also, if you would like to follow me on social media, I like that I'm trying to like hold my hand up. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm on 90 feet from home everywhere social media occurs. So on the Twitters and the Facebooks and the Instagrams. So give me a follow there. And then, like I said, leave a comment below. Tell me what you'd like to hear more of. And we'll see you next time. Again, thanks for following 90 feet from home. We'll see you later. Bye.